hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is a crime club. I'm the librarian. The Gypsy Sings of Death. Yes, we have that story for you. Come right over. <laughs> easy chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is. The Gypsy Sings of Death. The very unusual story of an old gypsy custom that led to custom-made murder. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was early evening all over New York, but in the time-forgetting atmosphere of the caravan, a gypsy nightclub, time had stopped for Toby Randolph as she reached across the table for the hand of Paul Palmer, the well-known Broadway columnist and man of her dreams. <sighs> What's the matter, Toby? Got a pain? Oh, Paul, darling. I'm so glad you brought me to this place. Uh-huh. Mm, it's like the open country. A campfire. Sweet, intoxicating music of guitars in the night. What guitars? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Flap your wings, honey. You're taking off. Oh, shut up. And I thought you loved me. Well, live and learn. Just try living for a change. Marriage in a house in the country, eh? What's wrong with that? Yeah. I bet many a family was launched in this place. Dan Harrigan, the bride's best friend. Who's Dan Harrigan? The guy who owns his den of delusion and false promise. Well, you don't say. Maybe I should meet him. Is he a gypsy? No, dear. He's not even a human being. Oh. That's life, Angel. One disappointment after another. Oh, get over it. The blessings of you. But don't look now, Toby. There's another blessing coming this way. And she's gorgeous. What? Good evening. May I sit down? Uh, why not? Thank you. I'm Fatima. I must read the leaves in your teacup. Oh, a fortune teller. How about reading mine? I will do it only for the gentleman. Will you permit me, sir? How can I refuse? It is well that you do not. Your cup, please. So, you're working for Dan Harrigan, eh? Ah. You must be the new one. I haven't seen you around here before. I'm still here, Paul. Huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Fatima, what about this mess in the teacup? I see adventure for you. Much excitement and great danger. Any particulars? I see... A festival. The festival of Zoroaster. You will be there. Who's going to take me? You will go. And you will meet Hakim, the king of the gypsy tribe. And Dagmar, the beautiful daughter of his third wife. Mm. And you will meet Kismet, the medium who communicates with the spirits of the departed. Beware of him. He's bad, eh? He will be jealous of you. But there is another who will hate you to the death. Who? I cannot see him. The leaves have become confused. Like I've been since I met Paul. That is all. I must go now. No, wait a minute, Fatima. You can't leave me with an unknown enemy. Suppose I met him face to face. Please, no more. Oh, the lady wants to go. But she told me... Oh. Hello, Dan. There's no story in her for your daily column. Not with you around, eh? But uh, let's be polite. Uh, Toby Randolph, this is Dan Harrigan. Really? Yeah. Come on, Fatima. We'll be late for the festival. Yes, Dan. So long, Paul. Drop in again sometime. I'm always glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, darling, there goes your gypsy love song. In swing time. Angel, don't you want that slave bracelet? What slave bracelet? Right there on the table. Must have slipped off your arm. <laughs> Not off mine, dearest. Then it must be Fatima's. Get that hunting look out of your eyes, Paul. The Festival of Sorasta. That gang of gypsies she found in my teacup. Let's order some more tea and drown them. Let's not, sweetheart. Let's find out about the festival and see what they look like. My columns bursting with curiosity. Hakim, it is time for the festival to begin. 
think we're not there. We stay in this house, Dagmar, until Fatima returns. Until Fatima returns. Ah, Kismet, you speak. What is the good word from the spirit? I was not communicating with him. I think only of Fatima and how she keeps her father, the king of the tribe, waiting. I am her father, and I do not mind. It is not right, Hakim, when there is no reason. She's working for Dan Harrigan. That flea on the back of a dog. Well spoken, my friend. But in this world, business comes before festival. If she has not forgotten us for Dan Harrigan. <laughs> Dagmar, foolish daughter of my third wife, what tickles your nose now? Kismet. He's jealous of every man that looks at Fatima. She's my betrothed. On her wrist is my bracelet. I want my future wife to be like the sky on a cloudless day. Can the daughter of my flesh and blood be otherwise? It can happen, Hakim. We have been here in New York too long. Yes. I hear Dagmar agrees with you. Sometimes, Hakim, I feel we shall never see the open sky again. You have only to look up. Hakim! Here we prosper. And here we stay. I have gone to great pains to settle my tribe. And you, Kismet, has not your spiritualist business put you in the income tax class? I can find the same spirits in Philadelphia and Cleveland and as far west as Chicago. But it is not for me alone. No. Even now, on the night of the festival, the people of our tribe are grumbling. They want to move, Hakim. They say you are getting old and too tired to be our king. Father. Ah, Fatima. Father. I did not mean to be late, but then Harrigan... What has he done to you? Silence, Kismet. No, Fatima. You may tell us about them, Harrigan. He has gone to the festival, Father. Oh? He's going to make trouble if we do not pack and move tonight. I see. He will not let you forget that you are working for him. I'm frightened, Father. By the lightning that never strikes twice, I begin to understand. This grumbling among my people, then Harrigan's work. Grumbling? Have you not heard? The people are saying that... <laughs> Quiet, Dagmar. It is serious business. But Kismet... Fatima's not wearing your bracelet of betrothal. She's not? She is not. Fatima, where is that priceless token of my love? I gave it to a stranger. You give it to a... Oh, Rimba, what is the meaning of this? I could not help myself, Kismet. Betrothed to a stranger? And with my bracelet? What is the name of this foul dog, Fatima? Paul Palmer. Every day he writes about people in the newspaper. I will cut his heart out. I will squeeze him in my hands. <laughs> Uh, well, the problems of being a king. Fatima, is he handsome, this Paul Palmer? Yes, Dagmar. He's almost beautiful. <laughs> Close your foolish mouth, daughter of my third wife. We are going to the festival now. It is a moment of solemn consideration. <laughs> This is wonderful. Imagine living all your life and never seeing a show like this. You're looking at my column for tomorrow, Toby. And you're still looking for Fatima. How'd you guess? Oh, darling, can't we forget her and enjoy this festival by ourselves? That brace is burning a hole in my pocket. That's not the only thing that's burning, Paul. Huh? You, dear. But I'm the patient type. I'd make such a good wife. <laughs> Look out, Paul. Oh, hey... I'm sorry, my friend. Why don't you look where you're going? Or at least go where you're looking. It is my fault. I have so many unhappy thoughts my eyes do not care to see. Ah, she's beautiful. Mm, he knows all the right words. I like him, Paul. Paul? With a palmer hanging on. Say, uh, maybe you can tell me where I can find Fatima. Paul Palmer. Arimba. It is he. Paul, he's got a knife. The murderer of my love life. Hey, wait a minute. Enough. I am Kismet, the medium whose spirit you have destroyed. Now I will show you. Oh, no, you won't. Drop that knife. First, I will kill you. Oh, foolish man, do you think you can hold my wrist forever? Paul, trip him. Do something. I can't, Toby. This guy's built like a rock. Get help. Where? Everybody's standing around Kismet. watching this. Not Kismet. everybody, thank the Lord. Kismet, you fool. What are you doing? Do not interfere, Fatima. Stop it. Leave him alone. Fatima, you slapped me. You have disgraced me before the tribe. I will have you expelled. You have disgraced me before the tribe. You... What's that bruiser got against me? Oh, the music. Shall we dance, Paul? All I want to know is It this... will not be too painful. Hmm? Well... We will dance. Um, do you mind, Toby? Go ahead. 
sucker. But before you take that first step, make sure she's not going to waltz you into a casket. You're so nice, Paul. And you dance like a real prince. Thanks for the promotion. What's cooking, Fatima? Cooking? With a bracelet. You didn't leave that trinket with me as a token of your undying love. But I did. Oh, now, wait a minute. I want you to keep it forever. There are easier ways of getting into my column, Fatima. You do me a great injustice, Paul. How about coming across? What? But the truth, baby, the thing that can stand up and be counted. I do not know what you mean. All right, then. We'll call it a night. So long. No, please. I, I cannot talk now. Why not? Dan Harrigan is watching us. Where? Do not turn around. He must not know we're talking about him. Okay, then. We'll waltz out of here. Oh, please. I'm not allowed to leave. Uh-huh. Do not force me. No one is allowed to leave before the ritual. Uh-huh. The ritual of Zoroaster should begin very soon. Be patient, please. When it is over, I will tell you the whole story. I haven't got that much time. Come on. <laughs> now, watch this. Dagmar. I've seen worse. <laughs> She's my sister, Paul. Oh, <laughs> glad to meet the family. She's not a blood relation, but I love her very much. Uh, what's that? She is the daughter of my father's third wife. She's my stepsister. <laughs> Did she bring that goggle with her? Oh, you did not lie, Fatima. He is almost beautiful. So has been talked behind my back. Eh? Could I have one dance with him? Of course, Dagma. I will come back after the ritual. Oh, hey, wait. <laughs> she can't do this to me. Is it so unpleasant, dear? I'm a busy man, Dagma. Look at me. Have I not many things to recommend me? I've got other things to do besides, uh, um, you certainly have. We will dance now? A human. I found you at last. Welcome, Paul Father. I receive you as a new member of the tribe. Who is this, Dagmar? Another member of the family? I am Hakim, the father of Fatima, the king of the tribe. Okay. Do I call your majesty or just Pop? <laughs> it's good. A man with humor is fit to be prince. <laughs> now I must acquaint you with the custom of my people. As long as you don't use a knife. A betrothed never dances with another girl until after the wedding ceremony. I'll make a note of it, Your Majesty. Ah, it is about to begin. The ritual of Zoroaster. I must go now. So sorry. But we will meet when it is no more. Future son-in-law. And we will make plans for your wedding. Tell me, uh, Dagmar... Is the king all right? Oh, yes. Then why'd he call me future son-in-law? You are betrothed to Fatima. And uh, me? You accepted her bracelet, did you not? I did not. Prince Paul Palmer. <laughs> I'd better find Toby and get out of here. I... Hey, what's the idea? The lights have been turned out. The ritual begins in total darkness, Paul. A sacred moment has arrived. No one may leave. What happens if somebody tries? No one ever tries. It is forbidden by the laws. <gasps> Don't try to hold me, Dagmar. Get your arms off my neck. Dagmar! Oh, hey, hey! Somebody put up those lights. Shh. Put those lights up and be quick about it, will you? I've got a corpse around my neck. Paul! Toby, am I glad to see you. Oh. Oh, that girl. Somebody pushed a knife into her back while the lights were out. Who? I'm, I don't know. But I'm, I'm going out for the police, Paul. You are not going anywhere, my friend. Kismet. Murderer. What? He's talking to me, honey. You have desecrated the ritual of Zoroaster. People of the tribe of Hakim, why did he do it? He didn't. Why did this stranger come among us to darken our lives with murder? Paul, oh, we've got to stop him. He's inciting that mob to riot. Change that label to manslaughter, Toby. We were happy people. We lived in peace. We loved one another. And then came this stranger, and with him came death. Shall we let our once gay Dagmar go on the This is it, honey. Give my regards to Broadway. I had a great column. What is it that goes on here? There, look, Hakim. Dagmar is dead. Dagmar? Oh, once happy daughter of my third wife. What has the curse of Harrigan done to you? Harrigan? He is the knife in the back of my tribe. Then Harrigan did not kill Dagmar. It was this man, this foreigner. Enough, Kismet. I forbid you to offend the future prince of the house of Hakim. Yes, Hakim. Oh, 
Paul, was he talking about you? Yeah. The women will prepare Dagmar for burial. Come with me, Paul, my son. Where to, Pop? My throne room. You will be safe there. And we shall be able to talk about things that matter. You will come in after me, Paul. Naturally. The king always goes first. Well, we made it. Let's give three cheers for Alma Mater. Paul, who is this woman? Toby Randolph. One of the common people. Mm. But she's all right, Pop. She hates Dan Harrigan. Oh. She's going to be very useful to us. Mm-hmm. Well, she's very beautiful. Uh, but that can wait. Paul, my son, uh, did you kill Dagmar? Me? That is enough. By the sacred names of my ancestors, Dan Harrigan has struck for the last time. Are you sure he did it, Pop? How can it be otherwise? He threatened to destroy me. What's he got against you? Wise men make foolish mistakes. Let us talk about your wedding. Uh, now? It will take place tomorrow. Uh, but, but we only just became engaged. Paul, what wedding is he talking about? <laughs> uh, Toby, uh, there's an old gypsy custom that if you take a bracelet... And you did? Yes, Angel, and now I'm a man with a betrothal on his hands. You don't have to go through with it. Tell it to him. Oh, uh, by the way, Hawkins... Which way, my son? Where's Fatima? Ah, you're impatient. She didn't come to the rescue of her future husband when Kismet was whipping the crown. Hakim, the evil one is still with us. Kismet, I give you warning. When you speak of a future prince... Fatima is no more. What? She's gone. Dan Harrigan, too. Well... It is impossible. The daughter of my own flesh and blood would not deceive. I have looked everywhere, Hakim. Listen, a future father... Be calm, my son. I will fix. Come with me, Kismet. We will look together. Now, Toby, we get out of here. Through that window. And if I ever see a gypsy again... You, you will, but first we're going to Dan Harrigan's apartment. Are you out of your mind? I write a column, honey, and the two things Broadway likes to know. Murder and what for? <laughs> Hello, my blushing bride. Imagine finding you here in a strange man's apartment. Imagine it, Toby. I'm too tired. Where is he, Fatima? Dan Harrigan is not here. Sure. I'm not joking. I've not seen him since the festival. Uh Uh-huh. You will go now. I will not go now. By the dagger in Dagmar, I'll wait for the truth. She's told it, Paul. She has? I just looked in the other room. That was nice of you, Toby. Don't you think I'd make the perfect wife? (laughs) Now, Fatima. I will tell you nothing. All right, that's too bad. Toby, phone the police headquarters. Tell them we got Dagmar's killer. All right, Paul. No, wait. I did not kill Dagmar. That's the old refrain, Cookie. I will tell you why I'm here. I'm waiting for Dan Harrigan. I knew you weren't waiting for a bus. He killed Dagmar. My father would not move his tribe out of New York. And Dan Harrigan said he would destroy him. So he daggered Dagmar. Yes. I saw it with my own eyes. With both of them? You do not believe me. You wonder why I did not give a scream or set my people on Dan Harrigan. You little gypsy mind reader. I could not open my mouth. And then it was too late. He was gone. And you were screaming. Why was Dan so anxious to get you and your crowd out of the room? He has a shipment for delivery to other cities. Now, that's what I call a lead. We do not know what it is. Believe me, Paul. He has been using our caravan for eight months to make these deliveries. We do not know what or why. And I'll bet nobody's even bothered to ask, eh? He would not tell us. And we did it because he paid well. Then we began to think he's making criminals out of us. So you decided to settle down and Dagmar was killed. It was a good plan for Dan Harrigan. We're gypsies. When there is death among us, we cannot go to the police like other people. We must bury our dead and run away. With an extra husband. I'm sorry, Paul, if I've deceived you. But I thought perhaps you would frighten Dan Harrigan away from us. Yeah, Well, Fatima, there's only one thing wrong with your story. Yes? I don't believe it. What? Tell me. Tell me what was in those shipments, and maybe I'll change my mind. We don't care if you don't, Paul. What? What? She's not going to tell you. How'd you get in here, Dan? I'm Superman. I walk through walls. Is there a back door to this apartment? You don't think I'd live without one, do you? Or without that gun, either. That's a great comfort when you run out of ideas. Come on, Fatima. We're going out for some air. No. Don't be foolish, baby. You either walk out with me or the boys from the morgue will carry you out. Paul. I can't help you, honey. That gun's got me outnumbered. Very well, Dan Harrigan. I will go with you. Sorry, Paul. You know how gypsies are. They've got to keep moving. Yeah. Uh, 
Just one more thing. Don't write about those shipments she told you about. You'll never be able to prove them. Come on, Toby. We're going after them. I... Toby, where are you? Hey, Toby! I... Well, I'll be a press agent. Toby, wake up! <laughs> For Pete's sake, get up! Don't you realize you're sleeping in a murderer's bed? <laughs> Paul, you don't really think Dan Harrigan would have brought Fatima here to his own gypsy nightclub. I'm not thinking, Toby. I'm just looking. 2,255, 2,256, 20... Excuse me, Mr. Snyder. Can you tell us where... Don't I... bother me. Can't you see I'm counting the day's receipt? Uh, yes, but I... 2,157... You're cheating, uh... bud. You were up to 2,200 before. Uh, was I? Now, look what you've done. You made me lose my count. What do you want? Dan Harrigan, that's all. Well, he isn't here, and he isn't going to be. He called me up and said he was taking a long vacation. We don't doubt it, but did he say where? I'm not his confidential secretary, miss. Now, where was I? 2,257. Uh, oh, thank you. But we'd much rather tell you where you should be. Uh, of course. 2,358, 2,358. Well, what now, Paul? Just don't look. There's an apparition coming through the door. Hmm? Greetings, oh. my friends. Uh, did he say that to us, Paul? It seems so, honey. Let me check. Uh, hello, Kismet. I am so happy to see you again. He did, Toby. Are you looking for Dan Harrigan, too? He's gone out of town. With our Fatima? Yours, pal. I give you a quit claim deed right now. You are my friend. And I can speak to you from my heart. Does the garlic come from your heart, too? Do not believe what you hear about Dan Harrigan. He did not go out of New York. That man over there told What does he know? He's only a man. But I know Dan Harrigan did not go out of New York. What makes you so sure? He has a shipment. What kind? Who can tell? Every time it is something else. Can you give us a hint? Do you want to help me find my Fatima? Of course. (laughs) Anything that will keep your hand off that knife. Then we must find Dan Harrigan. Come with me. Where? My Temple of Shadows, where I communicate with the spirits. Can you make them talk? Talk! Ha. Boy lost friend, but I am sorry for you. Hand me a crying towel. A woman like that. No sense. Paul, you will sit over here. With my hands on the table? That is not my business. You, foolish woman, you will sit over here. You like me, don't you? As the saying goes, I can take it or leave it. Now. Now. What, Kismet? We will have a seance. I will reach out for the spirit of Dagmar. Oh, why her? Poor Dagmar was evicted from this life before her time. She cannot enter the blessings of Osmuth until her murderer has been paid for his crime. Therefore, I will ask her, where is Dan Harrigan? Why didn't you think of this before? The spirit did not move me. <laughs> well, it's moving me. I'm going home. No one goes without Kismet's consent. You just convinced me. Now put that knife away. A spirit without two witnesses. Woman, what is wrong with you? Well, you see, Kismet, it's like this. When I was a little girl, I, I was... I proceed with a seance. I shall put myself in a trance. Can't you do it at the table? Please, I am the medium. It must be done on my throne. Only from here can I reach the spirits. Boy, if that guy isn't phony number one, the world's champ. Ah! Good heavens, is that what these mediums call a trance? Phone the police, Toby. I'm afraid we've seen something new in spirit calling. What do you mean, Paul? Oh, what are you talking about? Uh, don't touch that chair. What's the matter with it? I don't know yet. Give me a minute. What are you doing? Just moving the body. What? Uh-huh. He's dead. And there's the thing that killed him. A needle? Yeah. Stuck into the upholstery under the headrest. And it jabbed him in the back of the neck. But how... Poison, darling. Something new in petty point. Oh... Let's go, honey. Yes. There's a phone in the reception room. We'll phone the police. What's that? There's someone behind those wall drapes. You are right. Someone is behind the drapes. Me. Why, it's Hawking. My future father-in-law. Did you expect to cut something with that knife, Majesty? Your throat, my son. Not tonight, Pop. I got a gun in my pocket, and the law says when you shoot in self-defense, you shoot in self-defense. You're lying. Do you think you can deceive Hawking? You hear that? I just released the safety catch. Would you like to hear a shot? No, no, no. I, I, I dropped the knife. I hate to bother you, Toby. You pick it up for me? No trouble at all, dear. There. I told you I'll make an excellent wife. Yeah. Well, Hakim, now I'm the boss for real. You uh, have no pistol? No pistol. That noise you heard was just two of my fingernails rubbing noses. See? 
You are clever, Paul. But you would not be so clever if I were not here, but uh, I would so. Sure. Now, tell me the story behind your killings. Dagmar and Kismet were traitors. They did not like the rest for life I ordered for them. They wanted to move on, the open road. Isn't that what gypsies were made for? They were made to obey their king, but they plotted against me. They poisoned the minds of my people. It was them or abdication. And you made sure it was them. What could I do, clever one? What does an old king do when his castle is not in order? Not what you did, Pop. These days he quits. These days. These are days, my friends. What about those shipments you made for Dan Harrigan? You know about them, too. Well... I want particulars. Of course. Dan Harrigan and his tribe would steal. And Hakim and his tribe delivered the merchandise to places in other cities. What merchandise? Mm, whatever it suited Dan Harrigan and his tribe to steal. Sometimes fur, sometimes whiskey... Sometimes even automobiles. You were some distributor, weren't you? Hakim, I've got a surprise for you. You will let me go? No. I'm going to hand you over to the cops in one piece. <laughs> Paul, I'll never forget that look on Dan Harrigan's face when he was brought into police headquarters and saw us there. Yeah. Well, that look on Fatima's face. Imagine that girl telling us she saw Dan Harrigan kill Dagmar. Yeah. When she saw Hakeem, her own father, do it. Yeah. Not that I've got any sympathy for Harrigan. But she had no right to point the finger at him. She should have said nothing if she wanted to save her father. Yeah. Oh, well, like father, like daughter. <laughs> and that was the girl you were going to marry, dear. Yeah. What's that? Uh, oh, look, Sophie, i got to get this column out. I've only got 15 minutes of press time. Of course, dear. Well, here's a lead for that column. Dead duck makes deadline. Uh, but, huh? Good night, you worm. And so closes tonight's story, The Gypsy Sings of Death. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Chet Stratton played the part of Paul Palmer. Virginia Dwyer was Toby Randolph. Stefan Schnabel was Hakim. Peter Capel played Kismet. Inga Adams was Fatima. Gloria Stenyi was Dagmar. And Barry Thompson was the man. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very unusual story of a going concern that went for murder. It's called a deed indeed. In the meantime, well, in the meantime, there's a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.